Oh. It's all your fault. How dare you? Can I go under here? Oh, sorry, I was just... just gonna stop wasting time now. Let's get a move on. Achievement unlocked. Into the depths. <sighs> Gotta say... I didn't expect this game to go on so long. Okay, we're back in the freaking swamp. Gross. Where are we? It's like a radio tower over here or something. Well, it's probably an antique coin or a Mr. Everywhere somewhere around here, right? I don't care at this point. <sighs> Enhanced handgun ammo. February 18th, 1892. There was a collapse in the Patterson Mine. Tuon and Beckford are dead, and Huxley will never walk on his own again. Old man Stan was right. The ground here is too unstable. The company's not going to send us any replacements. They want us to work double shifts instead. I can't wait to get back to the old country. Abercrombie Salt Mine. Alright. A helicopter. Are they watching us from that helicopter? That's the umbrella symbol, right? Alpha One, this is Bravo One. Do you read? This is Alpha One. Report. Did you find anything? A thorough search of the Baker property revealed zero survivors. What? Eight, zero survivors. We did find evidence of a skirmish. A skirmish, Alpha huh? One. Negative. However, we did find several encrypted messages from the Baker's son, Lucas, to an unknown third party. You can probably guess who that was. That's just great. We've had reports using the abandoned mine south of the property. I'm gonna go have a look. You can probably that, guess who that was. You at those coordinates. If you encounter Evelyn, orders are shoot to kill. Repeat, shoot to kill. You can probably guess who that was. Do they know me? How would they know me? Oh, stabilizer. Oh, there's there's the Magnum if we wanted to get it here. Okay. Do I have everything in my item box? You've taken me as things. All right, guys, I'm gonna end things here. Uh, I've gotta go to PAX now, so... Uh, I'm really upset I didn't get to finish the game before I went, but I think I'm pretty close. Anyway, we'll pick up as soon as I get back. I don't know if this is the end of the video or if I'm gonna just cut <laughs> when I return, but uh, I'm done for this session, so. All right, I don't know how to end this, so bye. Hey guys, it's John. I'm back from PAX. I've been gone for about five to six days and uh, while well, it was a really fun trip, pretty much the entire time I was thinking, I gotta get back to play this game and I've had a full night's sleep, so hopefully it won't be as delirious as I was in the last couple episodes. We're about to go into the salt mines apparently. And uh, I've got all my uh, weapons together. I decided to cut that part out. It was kind of boring, but I've got the Magnum. I've got the grenade launcher, the shotgun, the machine gun, and, uh, yeah, I decided to take some corrosive with me, too, just in case. But, okay, here we got some chem fluid. And, uh, yeah, I killed a Mr. Everywhere in there, too. I killed it. I shot it. I don't, I don't think it can actually die. I want to take one of these. Oh! Hey, what's up? Also, everyone in the last episode it was making fun of me for missing my shots on these guys. You can go fuck yourselves, alright? I'm just kidding, but seriously, it was fucking annoying to read those. <laughs> I was going on like no sleep at the time, so of course I was playing awful. I do like blowing these guys' head off, though. It's pretty satisfying. Another chem fluid. Oh, there's another dude. Hey, come here. 
<laughs> How many of these guys are around? Seriously. I mean, I'll kill them. I'm fine with it. Oh. I don't have my knife with me, so. Is that another chem fluid? I don't have enough space. Holy shit. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Can I get rid of the burner fuel? I'm not gonna use it. Yeah, trash that. I don't know if I want the strong chem fluid though. I'll just leave it there for now. Shotgun shells, I'll take that. And what's this? An herb. Cool, I'll actually take that. Um, combine it. Oh wait, hang on. People were telling me I could just do this. Ah, that is quicker. I knew that, I just... I don't know why, I just didn't think to do it every time I opened my inventory. Also, some people were telling me I can combine herbs with other herbs. That is confirmed not true, because I tried that and nothing happened. Let's go inside. Boop! So I wonder how much of the game is left. I actually have no idea. I talked to some people at PAX that had finished the game and I was like, you know, I'm at the salt mines and they're like, oh, you're really close. But I don't know if that's like 20 minutes close or 40 minutes close or an hour close, you know? All those could be considered close. I have to say, I don't know uh, what to anticipate in this sequence, but I really preferred the house segment over the ship that we went through. I think that that was a much stronger part of the game. Hi. Oh, I need to reload. Probably should have done that first. I'm over here, dummy. <laughs> oh, man. Anything cool in here? Oh. I mean, I don't have to blow it up. I didn't bring my knife or the handgun because I was like, I'm so full of bullets. Can just, can just use some. Took an herb there. Oh, I guess I can just shoot it. Don't really care. Just so I don't run into them, you know. Oh, hi! What's up? I prefer to take these guys out with a shotgun. I did have two remote bombs I probably could have used. I just didn't really... think about bringing them. That would have been good there. There we go. Haven't even had to block yet. So they came from this way, right? Okay, right. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing over here. You know, we saw uh, a little photo of an umbrella helicopter, and those guys on the radio seemed to know who I was. So I got some theories going through my head right now. Alright, we got three different ways to go. Ooh, speaking of remote bombs. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, let me see. Should I put this in my... No, I'll keep them down for now. I was wondering if I should put it in my quick select. Is that... It is! Magnum ammo! Just what I like to see! Oh, hi. Where'd you even come from? Yeah, wh where the fuck did you even come from? I don't buy that for a second. Eh, maybe he was like attached to the wall or something. Then he decided to form. I'm gonna use another psycho stimulant just cuz. Make sure I don't miss anything, you know? Uh, 
Again? Oh shit. Hi! Seriously, where are they all coming from? Press this, okay. Oh, gotcha, destroy the barrier. Yeah, there's nothing up here. All right. Left or right? I guess left. <laughs> Almost didn't see that. That didn't even have anything. That was ooh. That was rigged. Shit. Herbs. Thank you. Steroids. I want steroids. Are you fucking kidding me? I want steroids. All right, this is uh, Friday, January 16th, 2015. Thanks to you guys, it's been about a week since my head's been clearing back to normal. And she still thinks she's got to me. You guys really need to work on fixing that. Not only does she look like a little kid, but she's about as stupid as one, too. <laughs> Mom and Dad are still totally under, though. I was wondering, is this whole family obsession something you guys programmed into her? It's kind of fucked up. All right, so Evelyn's a biological weapon, basically. That bitch Mia is still somewhere in between Evie La La Land and reality. She gets pretty violent, so I locked her up in a cell. I thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia's her favorite and all, but she doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometime. I think Mia's her mommy. Like I said, your bioweapon is fucked up. Evelyn's family obsession is getting out of hand. She's making everyone kidnap more and more assholes off the street to add to her freak show of a family. Sorry, I know my voice went weird just now. It was, ah, whatever. Maybe she's getting tired of me and not coming around, but it's a pain in the ass for me because I gotta clean up the mess whenever someone new comes along. By the way, Evie's looking sick or something. Her skin is getting all wrinkly and she's getting gray hairs. Is that supposed to happen? It's almost like she's getting old all of a sudden. She's grandma. She's grandma. In the wheelchair. That's her. Holy shit. I was wondering this, that was one thing I was wondering the entire trip. When I was gone the past week, I was just like, who the fuck is grandma? Like, she kept appearing, and then it's like, she didn't matter because we just left her there. What the fuck? I really want these steroids, though. Ah, that, that is nuts. Infection report, okay. This report details the symptoms that appear when the bacterium that grows inside the E-series infects a human. Be sure to read this document thoroughly before dealing with E-series weaponized assets. Hereafter referred to as mold. Okay. The mold ingests nutrients from the subject's body to propagate itself and slowly takes over cells within the body. We saw this in action with the, the cop. As a side effect of this, the infected subject gains remarkable regenerative abilities. During experiments, we removed arms and legs from test subjects and found that they were able to co-apt the amputated limbs in a matter of minutes. Right, we saw that with Jack. And with Lucas, actually, because Lucas had his arm cut off, if you remember. Once the mold reaches the brain, the subject's thoughts become in tune with those of the E-series asset. The subject starts to hear things and experience hallucinations and soon comes under complete control of the E-Series asset. If the state continues, the host will lose all sense of ego. After each cell in the body has been taken over by the mold, the subject, 
begins to lose their human form. Physical mutations differ from case to case, but all result in him or her acquiring incredible physical strength. Containing a subject at this stage would be extremely difficult. Well, looks like it didn't happen, so, you know. Also, sorry about the face cam fuck-ups in the previous videos. Like I said, it was really late. <laughs> Five minutes after dose, vomiting. E, necrotoxin. E series dosage test. Ten minutes after dose, death. Twelve minutes after dose, cell calcification. Wow. That seems awful. Why would anyone do that? I sure as fuck wouldn't want to do that. Target acquired. Oh! Again! e necrotoxin destroys cells of any subject based on the E-Series bioweapon model. Use only for disposal of E-Series assets. The toxin must first be stimulated before use. Do this by placing a sample of an E-Series cell into a necrotoxin container. So we can put in the Evelyn tissue samples. Well, hang on. I want to read the rest of the stuff in here before we move on. Uh, this project was instigated in 2000 as one of several concepts for the company's next bus, next generation experimental battlefield superiority initiative, working with technical assistance from HCF to develop a bioweapon for neutralizing combatants en masse with minimal direct contact. Shit. Next bus was later folded and all its assets diverted to this project. What makes this project markedly different from conventional weapons is its ability to turn enemy combatants into allies, converting hostile elements into willing servants. Yeah, that sucks. Since this effectively eliminates the costs of not only POW handling, but also combat itself, it's no wonder we had the... and even... organization chomping at the bit to get on board. Hmm... Wesker's Umbrella Organization. The project would never have existed were it not for the discovery in blah, of blah, the remarkably progressed vicarian evolution fungus that we commonly term the mutamycete. The fabrication method for each bioweapon was to introduce the mutamycine genome to a pre-stage 4 human embryo and perform cultivation in a controlled environment over a period of 38 to 40 weeks. The resultant organisms were referred to as candidate specimens and graded based on usability from the impractical and faulty, this is a long one, series A through series D to the perfected E series. A common appearance was selected for the bioweapons, that of a roughly 10 year old girl to ensure ease of blending in with urban refugee populations. The first E series specimen, named Evelyn, of course, has proven capable of secreting the mutamycete from her tissue at will. It is also of note that Evelyn's mutamycete imposes a profound control over body and mind when introduced into a host organism. We still have a lot to learn about the mechanism by which Evelyn achieves and maintains this control, but the working theory is that the vector is similar to the auto-inducer pheromones used for quorum sensing in Pseudomonas bacteria. I have no idea. But that whole sentence just doesn't make any sense to me. Evelyn's control is exerted in a series of discrete stages, the first of which is hallucination. Almost immediately after infection, the subject begins to see images of Evelyn. They'll see is not in fact there, and even hear her voice, which is inaudible to anyone else. Auditions with infected subjects through the stages of infection reveal that at first, the phantom Evelyn appears to be a normal young girl, sometimes desiring companionship or assistance. As time progresses, she begins making more and more extreme demands, including self mutilation and attacks on other people. The psychological shock this induces helps to break down the mind's natural barriers to Evelyn's brainwashing effect, and by the time mental control is achieved, the mutamycete infection has progressed throughout the body's cells, so the body... Meh. Okay. Well, that was a lot of information. I understood some of it. Kinda lost me in some of the jargon, I think. But... What was that? Evelyn's functions also include the ability to form organisms from mycelia, the fungal filaments. The term organism is used loosely here. Strictly speaking, they are superorganisms formed of countless mycelia. What's important, though, is that they exhibit a strong survival instinct. 
and will defend themselves ferociously with the slightest provocation. Their fungal toughness and remarkable strength gives them significant battlefield potential. The researchers have been calling these superorganisms the molded, made of mold, and also molded as in shaped. The name has a certain elegance to it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the game developers patting themselves on the back there. Oh yeah, we made a good name. For the treatment of accidental infections, performing meh on samples of Evelyn's bite tissue produces a unique fungicidal serum. That's what we need to make. We need to inject grandma. Administering the serum to an infected subject will cause the mycelia to calcify, but if the subject's cells are already largely invaded, the serum will be fatal. Since the treatment window is so small, the serum's primary use is therefore disposal of infected subjects rather than a cure. Ah, okay. Wow. In exploring the serum's potential... Wait, hang on a second. Okay, well, Mia's cells weren't largely invaded, so the serum wasn't fatal for her. That's why I was like, why didn't it kill her? In exploring the serum's potential, we found that subjecting it to meh, would enhance its effects to extreme potency, become a new compound we now call e-neurotoxin. Sorry, necrotoxin. Which, meh, in even tiny amounts. So, okay. What's been interesting to observe in Evelyn's behavior is her obsession with the concept of family. I know, right? In experiments, we found on multiple occasions that infected subjects were compelled to act as her mother or father, treating her as if they were, as if she were really their daughter. Why did she settle upon family as the theme for her mental control? And that's just speculation, but it could be that she instinctively understands that a family unit is better suited to blending into social groups than a lone girl. Interesting. On the other hand, while a sentimental sort might suggest that she's making up for a perceived lack of love in her quarantined upbringing. A parent's love. Huh. That was a Red Bull. Not sponsored, though. I fucking wish. <laughs> If you work for Red Bull, you should definitely say hi. Drink that shit every day. All right. Let's see. I know there's gonna be somebody in the comments that's like, and it's not good for you. You know what's not good for you either? Breathing polluted air, you fucking idiots. <laughs> I'm villain feisty, I'm sorry. I, I'll be honest, most of the people I hung out with at PAX this weekend, we just took turns calling each other fucking idiots, so, you know. It's kind of just the mood I'm in. <laughs> Is there anything in here? Machine gun ammo. I legit ran out of space. Fuck. I've got so many healing items. I've got five healing items. Damn. Just looking around a little bit before we go. I'll go back up there and make the serum. Alright, so we gotta go inject grandma, right? Like, that's gotta be what's next. Wow. E necrotoxin. Let's get it. We fucking did it. Special serum for disposing of E-series test subjects. It could destroy Evelyn if injected into her. And I had to like get way the fuck out of the way for you guys to read that. All right, so we got it. Oh, neat. Flame rounds. Oh, come the fuck on. All right. I gotta do some inventory management and save, so I'll be right back. All right, guys. Here we are. This doesn't go anywhere. All right, I guess we gotta go down. Oh, enhanced handgun ammo. I mean, I'd love to take that, but I don't have the handgun with me. Because it's a weak-ass weapon. Let me use my uh, psycho stimulants one more time. Oh, good. Remote bomb. Chem fluid. I don't really need that. I've got five healing items and I've got plenty of ammo, so... Feeling pretty good, to be honest.
neuro round. Stop singing, huh? You know I got that E necrotoxin. Hi. You want me to die? I don't really want to die, so... Fuck. Oh, hey. Ah! Let's go. Let's go. I don't have to kill all these guys. I just need to get out of here. Fucking idiot. What? Ow. Fucking hell, dude. I was about to... Okay. I'll try again. That was just bad luck. Should have reloaded. Okay. Here we go. I won't stop and get the herb this time. That was dumb of me. Gone. What's this? Sure. Ah. Ow. What? Want to fight? We can fucking fight, dude. Yeah, I don't think so. Burner fuel. Machine gun ammo. Hang on, I want to get rid of this burner fuel. It sucks. Yeah. Discard it, please. All right, cool. I guess I've killed these guys. Kinda wanna go down here and see what was in the box. Shotgun shells, hey, it worked out. Okay, there's nothing in that little roundabout either. All right, we're moving on, we're moving on. I'm like ruining the pacing. There's like this dramatic music, she's like, die, and there's like, the walls are crumbling. And I'm like, let's look around for some extra items. Why the heck not? Oh. Give me the, nah, get out, oh my fucking god. Okay. I blocked there. Here's the deal. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So... Uh... Fucking hell. There we go. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll get him good. Oh! That was fun. Oh, that was cathartic. I really enjoyed that. That was great. Let's keep going. Okay. Is there anyone else? Oh. Who is that? Oh, it's one of the fat ones. Oh, it's several of the fat ones. Um, that's pretty good, right? Ah, they're on fire. You guys fucking missed. Come on in. The water's fine. 
The fire's fine, I should say, because you guys are on fucking fire right now, you idiots. Oh, wait, he's not dead yet. That wasn't so bad. Let's see... I could've done some remote bombs there, I guess. I only used up a couple flame rounds. We're fine, we're fine. Boop. Take those. And then what I get over here? Machine gun ammo, fine with that. Oh, I guess I could have used this to, like, loop them, you know? Strong first aid med. I've got so many healing items. Okay, and there's this. Almost missed that. <clears throat> Keep trying to jump, but space is blocked. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Gotta wonder how much more of the salt mines there's gonna be. I mean, as cool as it's been to, like, run and gun for a change, feels kind of more RE5-ish. Like, in the ship segment and in this segment. Like it's- oh, mind map. You're gonna give me that now? Are you fucking serious? Now that you've gone through the entire thing, here's a mind map. Yeah, we did all this. Okay, so we just got, uh, 1F left. Yeah, so we just got the first floor. Whatever, I don't really see the point of that, but... Cool. Alright, here we go. Boop. Grandma's out of her wheelchair. Grandma is out of her wheelchair. There's that doll. We're back. No way. We're back here. I'm sure of it. Yep. Hey, it's not here. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember that. I distinctly remember that. Of course. Alright, let's keep going. Hmm. Where's that freaking phone? We're retracing our steps. <laughs> Didn't do anything. Hi. Can I? Can I shoot? Damn it! This is your fault. It's actually oh, yours. It's un. It's undisputably your fault. How could it possibly be mine, you stupid little shit kid? You know, if you just wanted me to be part of the family too, this could have been avoided. <laughs> I like how it just kind of bounces off of her. It's okay. It's okay. It's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. Kill him, Mommy. But you shouldn't have done that! It fucking hurts! Does it want to be my daddy? Then he can die. Now it's Mommy's turn to kill you. Well, we're gonna fight again? I'm gonna find you, you little shit. Where are you? You're out of your wheelchair. You couldn't have crawled far. Wait, this room's different. Can 
Can I play the piano? <laughs> I always want to play the piano. Okay. You're not. Stop it. You're not fucking real. Where is she? She's not real. Okay. Oh, I don't go out. Well, where's Grandma? All right, we'll find her. Upstairs? <laughs> Fucking hell, dude! <laughs> Hi! There you are, you little shit. No! Okay, so we... Here, here. There you go. Leave me alone. I guarded. Okay, come on. Don't. Damn it. <laughs> I got a little too close there. Did I not win? Come on. 
No, whatever, I shot the fuck out of her just now. Got her. Use the chemical. Use the chemical. Come on, man. Use the freaking chemical. Unknown. The Albert O1. Like Albert Wesker. Playtime's over? That was such a Resident Evil one-liner. They just had to have one at the end. I just got three achievements. Wow. Playing it safe, the nightmare's finally over, and end of the night. I did good. So are these guys Umbrella? This could be like the first Resident Evil game told from like Umbrella's point of view, so to speak. Hi. I'm Redfield. I'm glad we found you. What? <sighs> The fuck took you guys so long? But wait. Mia. Yeah. You made it. I'm glad. Did I? They say that when one door closes, another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. And what a long night it was. But not just for me. Me and I weren't the only victims here. So were the Bakers. It was that thing, Evelyn, who made them that way. But now Evelyn's dead. So and it is- these guys are here to clean up the mess. I had just come to terms with losing Mia. But now she's back and wants to start over. Put all this behind us. Maybe this is where the next door opens. Side note, how many Resident Evil games end with them getting away in a helicopter? Oh, these are the credits. Okay. So wait a second. So that was an umbrella helicopter with Chris Redfield in it. No one has a problem with this. No one's like, oh, that's weird. So is umbrella reformed? Like this is like, this is a different umbrella. It has to be, right? For Chris Redfield to be a part of it. He said, these guys are going to clean up the mess. So like... I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, I have a lot to say about this game. But before I go into it, I do want to see both of the endings. So I'm going to go back 
save Zoe instead of Mia. And just see what happens. Alright? So I'll be right back. I do want to talk about this game, but... I want to see both the endings first. So I'll see you guys in a second. Aw, oh, there's the bakers. Of course, there's a post credit scene. What? Ah! Just gonna have the phone vibrating, huh? Alright, looks like I found... Most everything. I missed five of the files, five of the antique coins, and seven of the Mr. Everywheres. That's fine. Took me nine and a half hours to play through. So, a lot of people in uh, the first couple of days that this game was released was saying stuff like, It's only five hours long. It's not fucking five hours long. If you finish it in five, four hours, you were just rushing through it, literally, and not giving a shit about the story, not reading anything, not looking for secrets or anything, just running through killing everything. And that's not how you're supposed to play it. Alright, rant over. Boop! I unlocked the Albert 01R. We'll be added to the item box in the main game. Cool! I also unlocked the Secrets of Defense. Whoa! No, no, don't make us play as Chris Redfield. Ah. Uh, time to play as Chris and blow stuff up. I'll probably play it. I'll play it. I just. I wish it wasn't a Chris Redfield DLC. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and load up just before. Um, we, we decide who to save. I'll be right back, guys. All right, here we are at the choice, and I'm gonna cure Zoe. No. I'm sorry. I really am. But Zoe will be able to guide the two of us to safety, and then I can come back for you. Go! I don't want to hear it, both of you. Just go! Yeah. Go! Damn. My place is here. With her. Don't be ridiculous. You forget. I still have a job to do. Oh. Right. I like how Mia's looking at her like this bitch. <laughs> what a home wrecker. I'll send help. Okay, but then like what happens after this? Do we play as Zoe on the ship? That doesn't make any sense, considering what we know about what happened. Does she just die? She won't even talk to me. Thank you. I can't believe you chose me. I can't believe it either. It is no good to anyone right now. But we might make it out of here in one piece. So. She's not even happy. I want to know what all this is about. Starting with Mia. Mia came here with Evelyn. That's how it started. Evelyn. The kid. I knew Mia was hiding something. Uh-huh. That. There's the boat that Mia came with Evelyn on. Her accent keeps changing. It came on that. Let's go take a look. I'm not going back there. I gotta know what Mia was up to. Interesting. What the hell was that? It's her. Evelyn doesn't want us to leave. <gasps> no, no, Evie, please, Zoe? Evie. Zoe. Zoe. What the fuck? Okay, so So Zoe dies. Mommy. This way. I 
And then we, we still wake up here as Mia, so it just kind of bottlenecks right afterwards. Okay. Alright, so then everything from here on out is the same, but I assume that the ending is different. How? Does she say something different when she sees Ethan? Like, <laughs> you son of a bitch, you deserve it! Something like that, probably. Ethan? Ethan! Oh no, it's the same. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, I'll play through the ship segment and the salt mines again, I guess. And if anything's different, I'll let you guys know. I bet this scene's gonna be a little different. There's no time! Here, take this. What's this? I won't be able to resist for much longer. Oh, we didn't get tossed out the door. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Crowbar. Okay. Okay, this did not happen. Before, Can obviously. Have a good time. No, no, the answer's always no. Wow, you got really close. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta kill her, right? I can't leave. Ow! I got stabbed. Oh my god. Okay, I guess it just picks up after that along the same route. The fuck took you guys so long? Up. Oh. No Mia. I cannot wait to be done with this babysitting job and come home to my loving husband. I miss you. Oh. I gotta get back to work. I love you, Ethan. I miss you so much. I'm sending tons of kisses. Bye, baby. Goodbye. Don't toss your fu- What? Let me just throw this $700 piece of technology out the window. They say that when one door closes, Another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. That's for sure. And what a long night it was. But not just for me. Me and I weren't the only victims here. So were the bakers. I don't think any of the dialogue changes. It was that thing, Evelyn, who made them that way. Hmm. But now Evelyn's dead. Okay, so interesting thing to note here. And these guys are here to clean up the That's mess. a different Umbrella logo. I didn't notice it the first time. I was too busy, I just like... come to terms with losing Mia the first time. But now I've lost her again. And the only other door I can see... is closed. The door to safety, perhaps? Could that have been a reference? Okay. What I was gonna say is... the logo is purple and white instead of the traditional... red and black? Red and white? Red and... Red, black, and white. It was purple. That suggests that this is a different Umbrella Corporation. 
So anyway, okay. Now that I've seen both endings to RE7, uh, time to kind of give my, my thoughts on the game overall. I thought it was excellent. Um, I, of course, have minor problems with certain things. I think that the ship segment is pretty weak. I don't think that the salt mines are a very strong area either. I think that they were probably added for length and also to follow the formula of old school Resident Evil games. Um, which I didn't think was entirely necessary considering how similar this game is to the early Resident Evil games. And if you disagree, I'd like to give my reasons why in a second. But yeah, I, I think they could have done without the ship and the salt mines. I understand that that's where a lot of this, the game's story took place. But uh, as far as like the horror pacing goes, I think that they were kind of just helping it feel a little bloated instead. Um, overall, I enjoyed it though. I don't think it was, I don't think it quite overstayed its welcome. I think it just kind of got close. And it would have been better as a shorter game, but um, I enjoyed it altogether. You know, the problem with one of the problems with horror games is that you can't make them too long because then you get desensitized along the way. Uh, I didn't really feel desensitized. I mean, there was a little bit in the salt mines where I had the shocking out and I was like, bam, that molded's dead. Bam, that one's dead. Bam, that, you know. And it kind of, it was a far cry from the beginning of the game where you're running from invincible characters and you're hiding and stealthing around. It's very different. It changes, you know, about three quarters way through the game. But enough about that. Talking about the game overall. I think this is probably the first game I've seen since like three to really stay true to the original's roots. Uh, I think that this is basically Resident Evil 1. Made in 2016, 2017, in first person view, with rednecks and mold monsters instead of zombies. Because if you look at it, it's it's incredibly similar in terms of how the game was designed. You, you start in one house, right? Like a mansion, if you will. Um, you know, you go around collecting emblematic keys to open up previously unlocked areas and you kind of you kind of backtrack your way around through different areas opening up places that you previously couldn't go into uh, you know everything down to the the maps is very similar to the original and then you know you leave the mansion but you're not quite done you have to go to several side areas all culminating in a lab at the end and the helicopter rescue at the finale so I think it's it's the structure is almost identical to like the first Resident Evil game and I think that that definitely lends it like a classic feel and I know that not everyone is happy with you know Invincible Jack and the Baker family but I think they I think they were really cool villains I I think the voice actor for Jack did, a, did an amazing job personally in particular, I think that uh, you know he was very convincing when he was walking around looking for you and had a generally, uh, genuinely terrifying uh, um, cadence to his voice. I don't know if that's the right word. And then you know you fast forward to near the end of the game, after after um, Mia's found Ethan, where Jack's talking to him in the living room, and it's like he's a completely different person. I think that the, the voice work was really well done for him in particular, but for all the characters, really, the game has good voice acting. Game looks great, um, you know, all the boring aesthetic shit, I think they did well. You know, I don't like talking about like, oh, the graphic fidelity was very good. It's just, it, it doesn't really matter to me, I'm here more for like, the gameplay, the, the overall experience, the ride, you know, and, and the story. Um... I think the story was okay, on that note. I like the Bakers. I don't so much like Evelyn. I feel like the... I feel like it's interesting to have a bioweapon as a person. I can't recall a Resident Evil game that's done that before. Um, you know, previously it's just been like, oh, it's a virus. But this time it was kind of anthropomorphized, which I hadn't seen that done before. That was interesting. But it was just like, anyway, you know, I understand why they made it a little girl, but... It reminded me heavily of like fear and other other like little girl horror games um, 
felt uh, felt a little bit out of place. Um, but I liked it overall. You know, I I think that the story was one of the weaker parts of the game. Actually, I think the gameplay is definitely the strength. I I think that they perfectly blended, um, like the first person horror of Outlast and games like it, which there aren't that many. I'll get to that rant in a second. And guns and combat and action gameplay. I think it was a good balance. Towards the end, it kind of slammed a little heavier towards the action, which I didn't much, so much care for. i already been over that. But um, I honestly, let me just get this out of the way. I can't believe this game exists. I can't believe Capcom made a game like this in the main Resident Evil series. I think it's terrific. There are so few AAA horror games these days. This is the first one in a year and a half. The last one was arguably Until Dawn, which, you know, if you've played Until Dawn, <laughs> it's it's kind of more of a, like a slasher homage. Than, I mean, there are some horror elements, obviously, but this is like a, a traditional AAA horror game modernized for today, and I just can't believe it exists because, you know, everyone... I, I know that a lot of, like classic Resident Evil fans, or, or I, really I think they're just RE4 fans are pissed about this game and the direction it took. Saying that like, it's Outlast, you know, 2 basically, and that like, oh, you know, instead of uh, Capcom making like a cool new Resident Evil game, they're cashing in for a generic Outlast horror game. I guess it's what gets them the big bucks or whatever. And it's like, I don't understand, like, what about this screams big seller to you? Do you know how many units Outlast sold compared to Resident Evil 6? It's it's like, the, it would have been a much safer financial move for Capcom to could be like, okay, RE7, it's just RE6 again. You know, with all your favorite characters, the the, the Resident Evil cast comebacks again, uh, with, with more explosions this time. But instead, they went back to the horror roots. Um, and you know, I, I know a lot of people say that like, well, RE1 and 3 were never about scary horror. It was always about like, B-movie dialogue and all that shit. If you played Resident Evil 1, 2, 3 back in the 90s, it was fucking scary. They're not scary today because we have much scarier games. But this, uh, to me, it it, uh, it it evokes the same feeling of like, ooh, this is this is kind of spooky, that those games did 20 years ago. And so yeah, I think that you know the first Resident Evil games were they were scary horror games for the time. They're just dated now, and this stays true to that. So I think that Resident Evil Seven, you know, that combined with all the stuff that I've said just now. Resident Evil 7 is Resident Evil going back to its roots in like every conceivable way except that it's in first person instead of third person. And I've heard many opinions that people don't like the, th the first person. Um, basically at this point, I would say get with the fucking times. That I, I, I just don't know what to say. There's, there's, there's no reason to shun this game because of its perspective. Uh, there's no reason to prefer third-person horror to first-person horror to the point that you would skip out on this game, in my opinion. If you're interested in horror games, this... It was awesome, in my opinion. I, and, I, and I know that there's all these comparisons to Outlast, but I think the most similar game to this is Alien Isolation. You've got crafting, combat, you've got, you know, run and gun combined with hide and seek. It's... That's the most comparable game to this, in my opinion. I, but for some reason, Outlast has certain connotations, negative connotations to it to certain people. They love to just throw that one out there. Like, oh, it's like Outlast. And I think that those people don't like Outlast because it doesn't have any combat, and so they think it isn't like a proper game. I don't fucking know. But this, this has guns in it, right? I feel like there's something here for everybody. There's, there's, there's hide and seek gameplay for people who are more of the amnesia outlast type of direction and then there's gunplay here for people who are who are more you know in that vein that that prefer combat so uh you know and, and the bosses were cool i i think that uh, as gross as the marguerite boss fight was that was probably my favorite one uh the chainsaw duel with jack was <laughs> like on point too overall though i think that like the first 
two to three hours of the game were the strongest. I wasn't like the biggest fan of Lucas's segment, although I I do understand that like I think after two chapters basically of uh, Jack and Marguerite, they kind of I they kind of wanted to shake it up a little bit and keep the game fresh, keep you on your toes. It's like you're not just gonna be able to run and gun your way through this part. You're gonna have to take it slow, watch for traps, you know. Uh, solve puzzles, that type of thing. And so I, th- I think it was good overall. I just didn't much care for it. But um, yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on RE7. I think it was excellent uh, overall. And I'm really, really happy with playing a horror game with a budget behind it. Holy shit. Like, there are some good indie horror games that I've been playing over the past year and a half, but it's so nice to play something that just has all... <laughs> all the aesthetics and all the you know high production value that like like this one does it's just it's becoming exceedingly rare but thankfully 2017 is going to have hopefully some more games like this there's some really good looking games on the horizon that uh, look like they have a bunch of production value behind them too so this was a great way to start off the year if you ask me uh, really, really, really enjoyed it. Now, one thing I gotta get out of the way before we end. I am aware that the day that I'm posting this, there's Resident Evil 7 DLC out. I'm well aware. Unfortunately, that DLC is a timed PS4 exclusive for the next three weeks. The PC DLC is not coming out till February 21st. Now, I did buy this game on PC. If I were to play the DLC now, I would have to buy it again on PS4. Not only buy it again, but buy the $30 season pass for the DLC. So I'd have to be spending 90 bucks to play it three weeks early. And I'm not the biggest fan of that idea. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do about it, but um, yeah, the numbers are different because I obviously kind of speed ran. (laughs) <laughs> to get to the end, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much where I'm sitting at this point. I'm really annoyed that it's a PS4 timed exclusive. I have a PS4. It's just I don't want to buy the freaking game again. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Not only about this game, but how badly you want to see the DLC, um, and if you're okay with seeing it three weeks from now. <laughs> I uh, like. I know PC users generally get the shaft with release dates, but um, they released the PC port at a, around the same time as the PS4 port, so I was hopeful. Oh, well, overall, an excellent game, really awesome experience, and um, from the slew of comments uh, of enthusiasm and energy that you guys have been leaving, it seems like you guys agree that it was it was a fun ride. So, hope you guys enjoyed. <sighs> Gonna have to go back to the indie horror games soon, and uh, hopefully it'll be good. I'll try to find some good ones, but yeah. See you guys in the next playthrough. Think critically. <laughs>